That's what you've been. You're a big fan of the Resident Evil movies, right? Oh yeah, I've seen two of them. How many are there now? Big fan. I've seen two of them. <laughs> <laughs> there are six. Oh shit! Well, yeah, so I'm way fan. behind. Oh, I'm, I bet you I'm going to be really confused about this one. No, I saw won't. the first one. Well, uh, no more than we not. will. We we yeah, saw exactly. the first five, and we're going to be confused. Yeah, I see. There is no context to provide you other than the whole world's being attacked by an army of demons. I think. Pretty Zombie. Sanders stuff. Yeah. Well, you did um, manage to summarize it pretty well for Jay in a minute or less. Well, that was before the whole series got complicated, okay? <laughs> I feel like... Uh, yeah, that was back when things were nice. We had just a nice, simple apocalypse and everything. Now it's... Ugh. Now it's I'm just saying, I think you could try again for the rails. Oh, well, I, I'm willing to hear someone else give it a shot for Das Bullshit. <laughs> Any of you guys want to take a shot at, at summarizing the past five movies? Not a chance. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and and no, right. no time limit because it was impossible to summarize the five it'll, in one minute. It'll be short, but I think I can do it. All right. All right. So, in the present day ish slash not too distant future, a massive evil mega corporation of pharmaceutical badness called Umbrella is secretly developing all kinds of crazy underground science laboratories where they are working on, namely, something called the T-Virus, an evil zombie virus that can mutate humans and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, something goes wrong in the laboratory because, unbeknownst to us at the time of the first film, our protagonist, Mila Jovovich, she is actually a secret uh, security worker for Umbrella. Well, mm -hmm. she loses her memory for reasons because in the first she, movie yeah she gets her memory knocked out because it turns out that oh her name is alice mila his name is alice so alice is actually an experiment right she's the end product of a whole line of experiments to bond the t-virus successfully with human dna which turns you into a crazy <sighs> super soldier mm -hmm. and they go into the lab and they destroy the lab and they go Fuck, this is hard. <laughs> Wait, um, are you still on the first one or have you moved on? I think I'm, I'm saying I'm still on the first one uh, okay. because we can forget the whole the first romance one, subplot. So don't worry about that. Okay, I also saw so, Nemesis. That was horrible. No, this is this no, it was that. great. So <laughs> next we have, uh, but uh, the lab is built on top of Raccoon City or very close to Raccoon City. And the, the virus gets into Raccoon City and it causes... Uh, like a horrible zombie apocalypse in Raccoon City. Someone named their city Raccoon City. Anyway, they're going around and they're shooting zombies and everything. And Umbrella basically like nukes Raccoon City. And then this leads to an outbreak of the T-Virus in the whole world where in between movies, the T-Virus has created a huge worldwide zombie apocalypse which has turned everything into a desert also. <laughs> and in the third movie, Alice and some survivors are going around the desert because everywhere's a desert now. And they all die and Alice doesn't. Uh, some other survivors escape to Alaska um, and nothing really happens in this movie all that much. It was kind of a lame one. This is the third one we're talking about now. So they, they go into another one of Umbrella's secret laboratories underground where even though there is a worldwide apocalypse, and society has stopped. They're still doing these crazy experiments on the T-Virus. But she goes in and one of the evil bad guys, he infects himself with a T-Virus because he thinks it's going to make him a super cool monster. And it does. And he kills everybody inside the whole laboratory by himself. And then Alice gets like knocked out and captured. But it turns out there's a whole bunch of clones of her. And then they escape somehow. And then in the la in the next movie, it opens up with they're, they're at another secret underground uh, umbrella facility in Japan. And Alice and all of her Alice clones assault the base with their swords and their guns and they shoot and stab everybody. However, Wesker, who's, who's like the evil CEO of Umbrella.com, he explodes the underground base. Uh, so we're just we're just fucking going through these underground bases. Now mm -hmm. it explodes, which gets rid of all the Alice clones conveniently, which now means we're only back to our original Alice. We assume it's so, the original, right? We don't actually know. We assume it's the original. We don't, I guess we don't technically know, <laughs> uh, but that gets rid of all the Alice clones. Hooray, I guess. So now Alice goes to try and I'm lost. She, she, I'm legitimately... she, she tries to rendezvous where all the other people went, and then she finds oh, like, yeah, mind-controlled Claire. Claire attacks it randomly in the airplane graveyard, if you remember. Oh yeah, she finds Claire, and she's been like mind-controlled through a thingy on her chest. 
And then she takes it off and Claire is slowly regaining her memory. And then they fly back towards civilization to like California or someplace like that. So they fly to Hollywood and it's full of disease and sickness and death and zombies. So it's basically as it is now. And she lands her plane on the top of a big tall building where a bunch of survivors from the apocalypse are sitting around holding up. And it just so happens that one of the survivors happens to be Chris Redfield, who is Claire's brother. Wow, what a coincidence. This doesn't go anywhere. Don't worry about it. So uh, after they fight and after a series of incredibly unlikely things occur, they escape through a tunnel to get out of the prison so that they could go to a nearby cargo ship. Is what mm-hmm. they're called. A big, a big old cargo ship. And it turns out the cargo ship is actually another secret underwater umbrella laboratory where Wesker is. Oh no, he's the big bad CEO guy that we've seen a few times before. So they go into the tanker and they have a fight with Wesker and they shoot him, but he doesn't die. There's like dogs and she kicks the dogs. It's so super fucking cool. And and that's where we get the the, the cutoff for the next movie. And then the next movie, Resident Evil starts when all of the Umbrella people are shooting at the, the rescued lab subjects and Alice and her friends on the cargo ship and pretty much all of them die. So that's a convenient reset button again. And then Alice falls in the water and then she helped me out. Well, she (laughs) wakes, like a clone of her wakes up in the simulation to eventually get killed. And then we cut back to her, she wakes up in her in her outfit at the end of the first movie the 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 really stupid hospital the red gown one? oh that one yeah it's not stupid it's very very revealing <laughs> the best part of the movie because <laughs> apparently this whole time they've been cloning alice and making alice clones run through really dumb simulations so that they could get like the perfect alice so she could be a, a amazing super weapon however the reason that they have a simulation world is because there is yet another mega underground secret umbrella laboratory facility where they have recreated large portions of major cities on the earth where they can give demonstrations of how the virus works to people who could then buy it. So they've got all these simulations and oh, also all these simulations they're they're filled with clones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're filled with clones. So Umbrella has been cloning basically an endless stream of people and giving them fake memories so that they can fill the simulations. So when the virus happens, they could have like people in them to get zombified and stuff. So they go into the lab simulation place to stop it and put an end to Umbrella. Then they escape, but they blow up the facility and they have a big fight with some clones of people from the first movie. Did you, um, wait, did you skip past the Soviet zombie army? Oh yeah, there was a, okay, <laughs> so that's the thing. I'm, I'm skipping over a lot because it's all just, it's so fucking nuts. <laughs> so they cloned like an evil Soviet zombie army with complete guns. with AKs and like all oh, those old black tanker helmets <laughs> and, and everything. Cars. And they have red stars on their trench coats. <laughs> It's just, it's just, these movies are basically just built around whatever the prop department has available at the time. <laughs> kind of seems like it. And that, that whole desert thing makes it seems like, ah, we just want to do the Mad Max. Yeah, they know. were just in a desert because the T-virus turns everything into a desert. Don't ask questions. And mm-hmm. so they fight the, the Soviet zombie armies and they blow up the laboratory. Uh, then they go to Washington, D.C. Uh, it turns out that the, apparently like the last of humanity is having a, like a final stand on the White House. And who's um, the president? Uh, I don't know. Wesker. 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 Oh, yes, that's right. It turns out that Wesker is actually the president of the United States. Um, <laughs> wow. He's also the Umbrella CEO, but he needs Alice and their help to end the zombie virus and stuff, I guess. And so they become tentatively allies at the end of the last film because Wesker got elected to be president of the White House, essentially. <laughs> And okay, so I so we're all caught up, or do we still have another movie? That, <laughs> no, no, we have one more movie. This is the last movie, right? We're okay. gonna watch the last movie. That is what that is all us being caught up, I think. Okay. 